Welcome to Speak Spark. Today's guest is Jeff Savilico. Jeff is a Las Vegas headliner, had his own entertainment show for many, many years on this strip, and is just an amazing virtual MC. And we want to talk today about why it's important. It's a must have, not a want to have, to include a virtual MC in any kind of remote convention. It will it will make all the difference. Jeff's going to share with us his tips and tricks and his uh, what not to do and what to do, best practices. And really excited to have you here, Jeff. Welcome, Jeff Savilico. All right. Woo-hoo! How you doing, everybody? Katrina, thank you so much for that introduction. I, uh, I brought my own smoke machine. You got to get creative here. It's 2020. Uh, oh, so man. I am, yeah, I'm coming to you from Show Creator Studios in Las Vegas. This is where I record or stream all of my virtual events. I absolutely love doing everything here in studio to have the support of a production crew. It makes my job so much easier and it enables me to focus on what's really important, which is being in the moment, being present, uh, working the chat, making sure everyone is involved, pulling out themes, segueing from one speaker to another, and of course, adding all of those fun engagement elements. I've got all sorts of tricks and all sorts of uh, things up my sleeve here that I can pull from at any moment uh, if the situation calls for uh, a segue or uh, something fun to do, something uh, like an icebreaker to start off the day, or uh, something fun to add for maybe an award show or a banquet uh, as well. So uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you. If you have any questions at all, I I love engagement. I love the questions. So fire away in the chat. I'm here uh, to hang out uh, for as long as you want to hang out until you ask me to leave, Katrina. Uh, We're not asking you to leave. We're not going to ask you to leave, Jeff. It's always, always so much fun. Uh, to engage with you on any level. Um, so I know, like, I've got a few questions for you to, to share some additional information. You just mentioned a lot of what you do. You've done a lot of events since the onset of the pandemic uh, in March. And what was that number that you gave me? It was pretty impressive. We're up to uh, up, uh, over 100 now, believe it or not, which is pretty crazy. Uh, and, you know, that's one of the best things about virtual events I've found is that if they want you, they'll, they're will they okay with moving the event an hour or even a day. That could never happen before, right? Like the event's in Orlando, it's on this date, are you open or not? Yes or no? But now I find myself saying, you know what? I actually have an event that ends at 4 p.m. If you could do your, your event starting at 4.30 instead of 3.30, and they say, oh yeah, sure, we haven't sent anything out yet. Like, that's fine. Uh, so I'm able to do multiple events in, in a day. Uh, and again, the number has just add, just continued to add up, and I'm I'm well over a hundred now. Uh, and I should note that that counts all types of events. That counts right. hospital visits for my nonprofit that I do virtually. I did a hospital visit this morning uh, to Kansas City Mercy, and I have a show after this. I have a show for Cargill Food Service, a family fun night. I'm hosting a big uh, show, a team building workshop that all the families can come to as well. That's hosting general sessions meetings, multi-day meetings, award shows, nonprofit fundraisers. That is just everything. And that's another thing that I love about virtual is I, the, the breadth of, of events now is so huge. I'm, I'm doing yeah. all sorts of these fun events. Well, and uh, yeah, it's, it's been yeah. great. Yeah, I want to dive in there. You know, it's it's great that you've got the versatility to do all these things. But I think for uh, for everyone on this call, it's just great to like start thinking about all the different ways that you could leverage a virtual host or a virtual MC. And so thinking about, um, you know, I know my, my good friend Marina uh, does some amazing fundraising efforts with their mm-hmm. franchisees. And so if a franchise system has a particular charity that they want to, they want to do some uh, fundraising initiatives, you're, you're outstanding at that. And again, this isn't just you. And I want to, I want to make this conversation about what the wonderful Jeff Savilico does for sure. And just ideas, guys, in, in the franchise space, when you're planning your franchise convention, and especially now, it might not even be a convention. I think especially now, we're seeing um, companies break up what would have traditionally happened all at once. So uh, one of our larger brands 
at, had their awards event in one week. Mm -hmm. And then a month later, they're having some updates from the C-suite. So Jeff, talk to us about what you've seen in that arena, how companies yeah. are breaking it up. No, you nailed it. hundred percent. So I'm doing a whole bunch of events for entrepreneurs organization and exactly what you just said, they're having a monthly touch point. So instead of having the three day summit, right, six hours a day, they know everybody's bu busy. They're just bringing everyone together for a quick hour, hour and a half once, once a month. So it's this monthly touch point. I come on, I do something fun, kind of break the ice and I segue into the feature keynote. We have a Q and a, and then they have a social networking event. They've done virtual escape rooms. Uh, they've done, you know, uh, entertainment. They've done things where they have to work together. And uh, it, so again, just this monthly touch point. I've also seen two and three day conferences get condensed to maybe just a couple hours each morning because they know the longer that they make the event, the more likely it is that people are going to do this, right? That they're going <laughs> to just kind of tune out, right? And then you hear them like, right? You hear them answering emails. Then you hear like the, you hear the dog barking, you know, and you, people are just kind of tuning out, right? You lose the engagement. And so they just know if we, they make it short, if they say, hey, listen, you're going to get back to your email afterwards, right? We just want you from, you know, 10 a.m. to 12, right? So you can have your morning, you can, you know, turn everything off and focus for two hours, and then you still got the rest of your day. So I've seen quite a bit of that. And I always recommend that. I always recommend brevity, short, short, everything, everything with virtual has to be shortened. You know, the, the hour keynotes I found are now 25, 30 minutes. Yeah. The, the 50, 50 minute executive updates are like 10, 15 minute executive yeah. updates. Um, you know, it's just, it's challenging to engage and keep people engaged over this platform. And you, you got to do it. You got to tighten everything up. Well, and I think that's one of the things that makes it so important. Why, you know, why in my email, I had said why having a virtual host or MC is a must have, not a nice to have. It, I feel like it's so much more important in the virtual arena than it actually even is in live. I mean, it adds so much to a live event, but but really your role is to keep things running on time, keep the pace and really, really maximize that engagement, try to come through the screen. Would you yep. just roll with that? We don't even really have a yeah. plan for this conversation. No, no, no. <laughs> no, you're right. You're exactly right. You're saying, exactly, listen, I'm biased, obviously. So I always think that an MC is very important, but I will tell you this. I used to have to convince people of the value of having an MC at these live events because they'd say, oh, well, you know, Johnny does it every year and Johnny's pretty funny, like, and he likes to do it. So we don't really need a professional MC because we've got Johnny, right? Now, Johnny is terrified of virtual because he is scared that when they send people to break rooms, they're not gonna come back. He's scared that the system's gonna crash. He's scared that the keynote speaker is not gonna be able to come in. He's scared that the, the panel, someone isn't gonna be able to work their microphone or connect. And that's when you need a professional to be able to kind of calmly assess the situation and make sure that everyone is okay with what's happening. And that means being authentic. That means acknowledging it up front yeah. to say, hey, listen, this is not this meeting is not gonna look like last year's summit. It's not gonna look like last year's global sales conference and that's okay. We're not trying to recreate last year. We are doing this in the moment because what's important is for us to take the time to come together as a community to network to engage to learn to grow and we can do all of that over the virtual platform so will there be some hiccups yes uh, is that okay yes so when you acknowledge it that it doesn't have to be perfect and you can do it with humor right so i can say hey you know what you might we might see a a, a speaker and uh they don't really know where the camera is they say hey thanks a lot jeff appreciate it you know it's great to be here you know and we can kind of have a chuckle because we know people like that right um i'll make jokes about you know say you know, the guy in the office who like, he's got the mo real monitor set up here and you're just kind of on the side. So he's like, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, the, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not as important as what's going on over here, but every once in a while I'll kind of, you know, turn and acknowledge you, right? There's all these people like that who, you know, might not, might be sitting in, in front of the, uh, the window, right? They're sitting in front, you know, so they have this, this giant, you know, light behind the, the sun is streaming in. And again, if you acknowledge that, uh, same thing, like with their names, right? You can see Katrina Mitchell, Right, you can see your name right there. But a lot of people they forget to rename themselves over Zoom, and so it just says iPhone or iPad, right? And again, if you acknowledge that and make it kind of funny and humorous, that 
these are this is just the way we live now and that's okay uh then i feel like there's a lot of shared humanity that comes out there's yeah. a lot of vulnerability right you you know you even see it when before i would be on zooms with uh with prospects and you know their their kid would come in and like be like good night mommy and like kiss, kiss you know kiss her mom good night and in the beginning it was like oh i'm so sorry i'm so embarrassed it was like i'm, I'm so sorry was like kaylee mommy's on the phone like oh what are you doing right but now everybody's like yeah like cool right like i'm a mom i'm a dad i'm a, I'm a brother i'm a, like there's this is my home we're we're all doing it right you see like dogs come up and it's not like oh it's so embarrassing you know uh it's it's just real life and so again if you acknowledge it up front and you acknowledge kind of the expectations and that the hiccups the technical hip, hiccups don't matter that's not what's important then i think that goes a long way to covering any potential hiccups and getting people back to being authentic and really again that shared shared experience that we are all going through uh, this similar experience. So yeah. I think that's really important. Yeah. So, so far we've kind of touched on a, a myriad ways to use a virtual host MC and the importance of it and, and the value that it brings. And I think that you've brought up authenticity a few times and, and that's, it's so important to just, let's just be, be real. This is a whole new world for everyone. And, you know, yeah. if this, if something happens in the, and the next speaker isn't able, their, their mic all of a sudden isn't working, even though they did a sound check. A host can fill in. A host can manage what's happening while the technical team supports the, the next speaker coming in or fill in. The other thing, too, I'd love for you to, to talk about, and this is live or virtual, is, is what, we, what you call in the industry callbacks or uh, creating mm -hmm. continuity. Ta explain what that is and oh, why yeah. that's so important. Yeah, well, so you know, it's a, it's a, such a great point to bring up because a lot of the continuity happened at live events organically because everyone was physically in the same room, obviously. So a speak a speaker would go first, right? And then the host would naturally kind of say, "Hey, I love what, you know, Magic Johnson said about this or that." Right? I love, you know, what a great point and what a great perfect tone to set for the next 3 days. And then the, an executive talking about customer service would call back to what Magic Johnson said, right? He would say, you know, hey, you know what? And, and I love what Magic said about this. And then they would tease the thing and come in at night and everybody was kind of jelly organically because everybody's backstage watching each other's talks and they're, they're on their game and focused. At a virtual event, everyone is literally in a silo, right? So sometimes executives have to pre-record or keynotes have to pre-record their talks uh, for logistics or for any other number of reasons, right? So more so than ever, you need that great virtual MC to tie your event together, to tease out the themes, to pull it all together. So even if everything else is pre-recorded, we can talk a lot more about pre-recorded versus live. I'm obviously a huge fan of live as far as these virtual events go, but I understand some planners, they want, they prefer to have certain aspects pre-recorded to control variables. And I get that. That's fine as long as your MC is not pre-recorded. The MC is the one piece of your event that I don't believe can be pre-recorded because you need that person to start off in the morning saying, hey, where's everybody coming in from? You know, you could say a city, you could say a state, you could say a room in your house, you know, like, oh, we've got San Francisco's here, you know, uh, Dubai is here. Wow, this is truly a global sales meeting. What time is it in Dubai? You know, it's four in the morning. That is, come on, let's give it up for, you know, Johnny, whatever they you know, because he's coming in. We woke up at four in the morning. Wow. You know, I thought I had an early morning, you know, and kind of just saying, oh, so-and-so is still in, in bed. Oh, come on, Brian, get out of bed. You know, it's time for the meeting. Let's go. Let's go and say, hey, I want you to share one thing in the chat that you are most looking forward to today or share one challenge that you and your business are going through or one insight that you heard today. Looking back, what was your favorite part about today? What, what's an action item? Give me an action item in the chat. Because this is really important to, to mention, everyone is very honest behind the anonymity of a chat wall. So even if you, you've got your name there, sure. And even if it's a two-way meeting style like this, right? But you would never have, at the end of a day, let's say I get up at the Chelsea and Cosmopolitan and say, would anyone care to come up on stage in front of the, these 2,000 other you know, franchisors and, and just share something you learned today? It's like, yeah, right. But, but people will write that in the chat and all these meetings are recorded along with the chat and that's gold for a meeting planner 
So a good and, and, and the organization itself, the client, right? Yeah. So if, if you have a good MC, you can get people to open up and, and the impact goes way beyond a, uh, at, at the actual time of the meeting. I, I hosted two events for Conviva Care Solutions and they were very complimentary about this because it was an hour huddle. We did an NFL themed sports huddle. And so everybody had their jerseys on. It was like, wear your different jersey, you know, and it was fun. They were throwing me footballs and I was throwing a football to like the next executive and they were catching a football and, uh, and all the trivia I did was all about NFL and, um, you know, fantasy football. And it was a lot of fun, but it, they really wanted to keep it to under an hour. And there was so much content, but they had all these agents from all these different markets, right? Florida, Texas, et cetera. And so they got all this gold in the chat because they're going to follow up with each one of those agents and help them and, and answer them. So you could really see in real time, like, oh, wow, people are really impressed with the new billboards and the new radio spots and the new TV spots. Like there's all this love that's pouring in off the chat. If the director of marketing was just talking in a ballroom, they, you wouldn't be able to feel that. You know, it was very obvious to me to be able to come on and be like, wow, you guys love all the new marketing materials. You know, I, lo I love them too, but I'm not important. What's important is that you as all the agents love them. And wow, Nina, are you seeing the chat? The chat is just lighting up. They love the new logo. They love the new radio spots. You know, so-and-so's in the Jacksonville market and said he saw the commercial, you know, just today. And he was so proud of it to be working for Conviva. You know, there was all of this gold that came out. So yeah, yeah. Uh, again, yeah, yeah. getting back to like a good MC is able to pull that out. Right. Yeah. And, and again, because of virtual events, all that impact uh, can be so much greater and, and longer lasting and, and have a far greater reach than just the actual hours of the event. Right. Right. Excellent. Excellent. Let's, um, we just, we're going to just go for a few more minutes, um, 10, 15 minutes. So I would love for you to show us. So let's have a little tour of the studio and you do oh, things, awesome. it, you do things in a few ways, right? So you can do yeah. things just, um, really low key. You can do things in the mm -hmm. professional studio, you know, it's kind of from soup to nuts. Uh, yep. and, um, to show us, why don't you show us what you got yeah. going on there at the studio? Absolutely. And I'll just preface it by saying that I never really set out to be in the event production business. However, I like to bring, you know, a, a game for clients, right. And especially as the MC, you're, there's so much focus on you. Uh, if you're hosting a three day virtual conference, I'm on camera like 20, 25 times, right? It's not like you throw to one speaker who's doing a five minute update and then that's it. And so it's very important to me to have proper lighting, have space to be able to stand up. If you notice the energy that, that is created just by me standing up. And when we do a full event, uh, we have all these different camera angles that can cut to full body shots uh, as well, behind the scenes shots. Uh, so that's, that's very important to me. When I talk about event production, I found that sometimes I was hosting these events, but it was just easier. It just made more sense for our team here at the studio to actually produce the show. Because if the production company was in Chicago and the clients in Florida and I'm in Vegas, they would have to cut into me, which is very possible, right? You give them a feed and they could cut to me totally fine. But oftentimes, again, it was a pretty simple show with some basic assets, some videos that we would run. And it just was easier for us to solve that problem for the client as well. So I always offer that depending on how complex your event is, consider having us just produce the event. We're, we'll do your title slides, your lower thirds, your graphics. Uh, we'll clean up your videos and work in transitions. We'll do a branded welcome slide or a pre-show video loop as people are in the waiting room before we start. We can do all of that here. So yeah. I'll take you on a tour. Yeah, take, take me on yeah. a tour. But I just want to add to that comment is that, you know, having just produced a, a pretty large uh, virtual franchise event uh, called the Heat Franchise Summit, you do, I didn't know what I didn't know, right? So, right. boy, it, 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 it seems simple from the outside, but when you get in it, it's not, it's, it can be a little bit more complex. And I think it really pays to have the technical expertise backing you up. A hundred percent. And I'm telling you, Katrina, we have so many clients who just say, thank you so much. Yes. Like, I know I could have handled this, but like, I didn't want to. Yeah. And you guys just did everything. Like we, they sent us some PowerPoints. They sent us some some slides, they sent us their style guide and we created everything for nice. them. And they were just like, oh, thank you so much. We're doing two meetings for uh, two award shows for the Association of Energy Engineers. There's one in the morning for um, 
uh, everything outside of North America. And then there's one for North America in the evening. And again, we're producing that whole show for them. Um, we're going to be firing confetti cannons here and having a blast and cool. we're doing everything. They're giving us like the music that they want and the, and the kind of the theming and they're doing a movie theme and we're taking it from there. So great. So here's uh show us. Here's what I was so yeah. So this is kind of my, this is like my little playground, right? You can see I've got all my props and things uh, around from the, from the hospital show that I did today. So I do most of my events uh, right here. And we have these big TV monitors, of course, uh, so I can monitor the chat and I can see all the attendees. So this is our uh, 20 foot by 20 foot video wall. So we can put graphics and logos on that video wall. So we're doing that for at and I'm hosting at and conference. We're going to have at and Fusion, the logo there. Uh, I'm doing one for Red Hat Society. Uh, it's their Halloween. It's for uh, like thousands of people. So we're starting with a DJ in front of that video wall. And then we're going to cut to the cameras in, in here. So we have a DJ uh, for 15 minutes. And then we're throwing to me in that studio. Uh, you can see here we have this kind of rock and roll uh, set here. It's kind of cool. And then we have this nice, uh, this nice stage set here, right? So I'll mention this. We streamed a 90-minute virtual variety show for a company called Avpoint, which is a, a Microsoft like, cloud computing company. And it was for all of their employees worldwide and their families. And that was a huge success. It was a 90-minute variety show that I hosted. And we brought in all these performers from the strip. You can still see here we have silks in the air. We had nice. aerialists on these silks. Uh, we had magicians, we had roller skaters. It was pretty incredible. So I'll show you a couple more of these different sets. And what's nice is when you, when you have a multi-day uh, conference, what you can do is you can add some structure to it by having, let's say, the first, the first spot every morning on that red stage with the curtains, right? And then we can go here, right? So we've got this awesome news set. See this? Yeah. So... Yeah, Love so it. I've done I've done spots where I'm sitting here at the desk, right? And then we bring in, I say, hey, today's going to be a great day. Let me tell you all about it. First up, we have, you know, Mike Rayburn is going to be our speaker. And right here on that slide, you'll have Mike's headshot with, you know, what if keynote experience kind of will come at 10 a.m., you know. Then we go right into, you know, breakout sessions with so-and-so. We can have branding on all these slides. I nice. brought in people for live interviews. I've done panels like this virtually where nice. I'm seated right here. And we have all the different pan panelists that I'm speaking to virtually. And I have this monitor that I can see everything here myself. That's so, so great. You'll see here. we've Yeah, look at this really cool set. We've got an awesome set here for like interviews. Um, and we have the whole kind of, if you want to be direct from Las Vegas, we have the Vegas sign here nice. with a nice backdrop. Nice. Yeah. So and I'll just show you. Yeah, show us, quick. show us one more yeah. thing, and then um, and then let's talk about uh, your kind of your team building activities, and then I'd love for you to show us a couple of fun things that you do. Absolutely. So here I'm just showing you the. Uh, this is our podcast studio, and I've done a whole bunch of interviews in here. So you see this? Nice. This is it's called show show creators. So again, you can have branding on those slides, and I've hosted some executive interviews here uh, as well. So. Lots nice. of options. So it's really nice when I'll contract with a company, we'll say, okay, we've got two days, three days. Let's figure out where we want to film these. And we give them all these different options of these kind of clean white sets, or you do it in front of wood panels or uh, that sports desk, kind of the news desk feel. So anyway, the variety is fantastic. I hosted million dollar round tables uh, event. This it's actually going to be next, next week. And uh, same thing, it was a three-day event, and I think there was 19 spots. So we switched it up, and we put together a really nice package for them. That's... And I, it just kind of elevates the quality, you know? Yeah, it just and... elevates the whole event because they can see, like, oh, whoa, this is, this is legit, right? This is not, like, he's not in his basement, you know, kind of all trying to get good Wi-Fi signal and yeah, yeah. Uh, the audio is crackling. Like it's a, it's a full production studio. So thank you. Yeah. I, I it's yeah. awesome. And I really appreciate that, that tour um, million dollar round table. Typically their live events are what? 7,000 people, 10,000 people. Yeah. Truly global. They had to, they wanted it way ahead of time. They recorded everything because they had to translate it into, I think it was seven languages. So yeah, I'm not it's sure a, my... that's that's a that's a significant undertaking for sure. 
So, yeah. so we've talked about the, all the different ways to use a host. And one of the things that I want to circle back to is some of the really, really fun team building activities you've done. And I know at the be- beginning of the pandemic, you were doing a lot of the of, of one really fun team building exercise, which I hope you'll give us a taste of. Uh, yeah. That, was allowing um, companies to invite the family since everyone was home at home and everyone was locked down that they just companies were just hiring you to do an event for the whole family of the employees, which is awesome. I know. And again, it's that silver lining. Obviously there's a lot of challenges right now, but I try to focus on the positive side of these events. And that has been, that's probably been my favorite positive aspect of this is I started off as a family entertainer, Disney, you know, back in the day, right. I worked at Disney world and, and I was all families. And then for last, you know, many years uh, doing corporate events, it's all adults. Um, and it's great, but there's something about having kids and seeing other kids on screen. And you, again, that humanity of seeing people's families having fun together that just completely opens everybody up and uh, just getting that in kind of almost calling back to my roots as a family entertainer, having, having that come full circle has been really magical. So it's happened kind of accidentally, or I should say, uh, or organically is that in the beginning, you know, company would say, Hey, do you mind if we invite, invite the kids too? And I'm saying, yeah, sure. I mean, I'm a clean entertainer. Sure. Why not? And then it was so much better with kids uh, there as well that then I started saying, you know, hey, I offer family friendly, you know, bring the whole, during the kids, bring the whole family, uh, team building workshops and comedy shows. And sometimes they say, oh, can you do it just for adults? And I say, yes, of course. But I really now lead with the families because again, it's just such a nice experience. Uh, and hearing the kids laugh, you know, makes everybody else laugh and, and smile. And they're trying to juggle along with me where they have socks that they're playing along with and um, everybody's being active and standing up in front of their monitors. So let's so it's, tell, it's, yeah, it's let's, really te- let's tell our, uh, let's tell our, our uh, community what, what that is. So you do, you have everyone get socks, right? Yeah. So I start off with some fun, of course. And I start off by saying, you know, I would say something like, you know, when March came, you know, there were no shows for a while and I had some extra time on my hands. So I started dabbling in the art of magic and I'll kind of, beg for it a little bit and i'll say katrina would you like me to show you my magic trick yes yes here we go this is the towel vanish of mystery one two three ah! okay that was funny <laughs> that took you a long time to practice didn't it jeff you know what katrina i headlined on for 10 years on the las vegas strip and now my act has been reduced to a bad cat video on YouTube. <laughs> ah! <laughs> People laugh and it breaks the ice, which is what's, uh, what's most important. Right. And then I'll call back to it. You mentioned a callback. You know, I'll, I'll call back to it because, you know, I'll say, say, you know what? You guys didn't think that was funny. I'll just keep doing this. You know, no, stop. <laughs> <laughs> funny. And so, then, yeah, the, then I- the juggling, like getting, getting whole families. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I talk about how I've been juggling since I was a kid. And, you know, when March came, I couldn't get to my theater in Las Vegas. So I had to juggle uh, the only things that I had lying around the house, you know, and I got really good juggling toilet paper. Yes, Katrina, I was part of the problem. I know what you're thinking. (laughs) So I'm going to I'm going to try to break a record right here right now. Okay, the record, Katrina, just trust me on this for the most rolls of toilet paper juggled at once is 11. Katrina, we're going for the record right here right now. 12 rolls of toilet paper. Do you think I can do it? Yes. Here we go. 12 oh. rolls of toilet paper. Oh. Yes. Oh, boom. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Woo. I do my happy dance in my slippers. Oh, yeah. You like those slippers? Oh, love those slippers. Love those slippers. So true, true story. I got those slippers. I, I special ordered them because I did a group. Uh, and it was for an alumni association and their mascot uh, was a bulldog. And so I was like, guys, look what I got for you guys. And they loved it. They freaked out. So I'm all about customizing. I actually, no joke, I got an uh, order today for a bunch of lock boxes that came in because I'm doing a team building workshop for a bunch of realtors in Virginia 
tomorrow. That's tomorrow's event. And so uh, they were like, can you draw the lock boxes? And so I was like, whatever, I'll try. Why not? That's, that's so really, I always like to. Really fun. Yeah, whatever, whatever your group is, you know, whatever your franchise group is, I can, I can juggle whatever it is. And, and they love the customization. I did one for um, a scientific company, um, a biotech company. And so I put on a lab coat. And this is, this is a true story. I said, mail me a bunch of stuff and I'm going to open it on camera for the first time and I'm going to try to juggle three of anything you have in there for 10 <laughs> seconds. And if I do, give me a standing ovation. And if not, you can all boo me. Right. And so I opened it and I had no idea, but I said, make sure you give me a lab coat and goggles. So I put on the goggles, I put on the lab coat and then I got these beakers, these like full flasks and these cylinders. And I juggled the first time everything shattered, you know, so they're all boo. And I was like, Oh, give me one more chance. And the second time I did it and, and they loved it. Right. And so that was the picture of course that they sent out as like a recap is a thank you so much for attending. Um, so again, a little goes a long way. If you, if you really try to engage with their brand and with their industry, uh, and they know that it's fun and spontaneous and it's, uh, you know, it's a little, um, it's a little crazy, even better. Yeah. Yeah. No, I really appreciate that. And I know, you know, it's so difficult. It's so different. I don't want to say difficult, but it, it's just so different than your live. Um, you know, you're yeah. live, you're, you're on a unicycle, you've got audience members up there with you. You've got just so much, so much, uh, interactivity and doing it this way, get, you, there, there are unique challenges, but it's a unique format. We can't really compare one to the other because they're really just different experiences. Um, right. Katrina, can I throw something in about yeah. that? So, you know, one of the, I, you're absolutely right that engagement is, is more of a challenge, but the way that I personally get around that is doing my events in this studio and I wear an IFB in-ear monitor and I talk to my producer. So Travis, who's, who's our engineer, will talk to me and he's able to look through the pages of people, find fun and, uh, you know, different things we're talking about and give me a heads up and then spotlight those folks. So I don't have to be like, oh, where oh, can I see? I'm trying to find you. You know, I'm just here doing my thing. And then all of a sudden I'll get in my ear. We'll say, you know, Frank is eating donuts. He's not involved. He's just eating donuts. And then he'll spotlight some guy eating donut. And I'll say, oh, come on, Frank, you know, put down the donuts. You know, you can do this. We're all learning how to juggle, you know, and you kind of see him notice and everybody laughs. And then, you know, they'll spotlight like, somebody with like three dogs running around and I'll say like, Whoa, you know, Cindy's doing her own juggling show over there. Let's, you know, let's, let's leave Cindy alone. I think she's got enough to handle over there. And then I'll say, Hey, you know, Brian, wow, look at, look at Brian. He's doing a great job. So in that way you can kind of, I call it working the zoom, just like a, a comedian would work the room, right? You can still kind of literally come into people's virtual space and have some fun and have some interaction with them. And again, when you have an engineer in a legitimate production facility, they can selectively unmute people that you're talking to. So it doesn't get out of hand. It doesn't become chaotic. I know that's always a concern. People say, oh, what if everybody starts sharing their screen? You know, we have those settings locked down. So they're not able to share their screen. They're not able to just unmute themselves. It's all about knowing the settings, knowing the platform and having a third party engineer, I believe, so that I can focus on just being fun, spontaneous in, in the moment. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. I, and, and I think it's so important because it keeps you fully engaged with the audience and yep. uh, adapting to what's going on with the audience without, like you said, having to stop and go, wait a minute, what's in chat. And we've all been on those calls where people start reading the chat. It's like, we're all sitting there yeah. reading the chat. We can read, you know? So yep. So. Absolutely. And let me, let me throw this out there. You're talking about the difference between live and in person, uh, virtual events, right? In terms from an entertainment standpoint, live was so much bigger, right? I would have to balance a 14 foot ladder, you know, to get a in a ballroom because otherwise it looks small. Whereas here, for example, I can just do something very small like this that would never have read in a larger live ballroom context. So I can just kind of throw like a little something like this up here, right? And just do like, do, do a little fun fun trick, right? So I've done this. I have it blacked out, right? But this is a company. So I'll have, uh, you know, a company, Floyd's 99, I think it was, the barbershop, the chain of barbershops. And so I would, you know, just do a little trick like that and say like, hey, that's object number one. What comes after number one? Katrina, what comes after number one? Two. Number two. Oh. oh sorry, I had to. I had to, right? And so, you know, you can do kind of like smaller things like this, even the towel, right? As silly as that is, that's not going to play live of course so it's forced me from a creative point of view to really think about 
how I can still be fun, how I can still engage people and how I can still catch them off guard and, and really break the ice and make them smile. Well, I know I've seen um, I've seen clips of you with uh, uh, literally balancing a chair, like a huge dining room chair on your on your nose uh, or forehead. Yep. Is it your nose or your forehead? It's actually it's my chin. Oh, it's my it's my chin, believe it or not. Oh. Yes, I know. That's pretty um, amazing. Pretty amazing. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about your range because, you know, like, like for, for some, the, the towel joke might, might feel over the top and even a little silly sure. for other people. They're like, no, sure. we love that. Bring it on. And you, you know, you've always told me that the way that when you sit down with a client, you talk about your range from, mm -hmm. you know, from one side to the other side. Would you explain that? Absolutely. So I started all this off as an entertainer, seven years old, doing little juggling shows in my kitchen. Uh, I was that, you know, kid, the dorky kid with like the top hat and confetti vest and bow tie. And, you know, I was like, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls performing for my mom, dad, my grandma, anybody who would watch me. Right. So I am I am kind of first and foremost an entertainer. That's how I built my career uh, here in Las Vegas with the show uh, on the strip for the last 10 years. However, I often get asked to take that entertainment background and apply that to the corporate market, whether that's an award show, provide some entertainment, whether that's a multi-day conference, a nonprofit fundraiser. And I've gotten really good, I, I'll say, at, I uh, hope that's okay, I'll toot my horn a little bit here. I, I've gotten really good at, to your point, knowing exactly what's appropriate and when, because you're right, but doing the silly thing with a towel, you know, might not play for some groups and that, and that's a hundred percent fine. But what I have is an arsenal of clean comedy material that I know will play to kind of any group and, and cover. So what that means is talk about that spectrum. If you want, I can be the entertainer who is hosting your, your conference. And I'm often overtly positioned as such where a planner will say, Hey, our conference in the past has been boring. We get that in our surveys, our feedback all the time. Like, we want this to be fun. And so they will tee me up in a way to say, we have listened to your feedback. We promise this year is going to be more fun. And to make sure we, we are doing that, we hired a guy who's really fun. He's got his own show in Las Vegas. He's here to keep us on time, on task, but also to make sure that we are enjoying this, right? That we are having some fun. There's some levity as well. And sometimes it's just the opposite, right? They don't know anything about me as the entertainer. I know I don't juggle anything at, a, at an event, right? I'm purely the guy in the suit who's articulate, having a quick on my feet, doing the segues, pulling things out. I do have that range where I can be the guy who is doing your executive panel, your customer service panel, doing a fireside chat. I have a fireside chat with Damon John um, for an event later this month. Um, I've done a lot of those in person. I've interviewed... Yeah, you know, all, all sorts of folks from, you know, uh, the, the whole range, right? From tech, healthcare, and everywhere else. And they don't know anything about me as the entertainer, right? Um, but again, oftentimes groups say, no, we want that. Uh, what is funny is that some groups will think that they don't want that, right? So they will, I always bring everything just to be safe, right? So I'm going back to live events now. I still remember I did an event for Sprint and uh, they said, no, nah, I don't think we really need any entertainment. Just like keep it up going. I said, okay, no problem. But I had everything with me. Okay. So wouldn't you know, there was a moment where all eyes turn to the MC. And this is where it's really important that your MC has material. That your MC is more than just like, oh yeah, like she's kind of funny. He's, he's, he's quick on his feet. There's times where your MC needs to fill like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, because lunch is not ready yet. Right. And, and the, the last keynote wrapped 15 minutes earlier and you got to have material being like kind of funny and quick on your feet is not enough to fill real time. Right. So this is one of those moments where the CEO and the president uh, had a chat and then the president was going to speak after the CEO was flying off. What the CEO and the president talked about made the president have to change her entire talk. And she was very thrown off by it, right? Because he kind of went off about all sorts of things that she said, now I need to address this to all these GMs here. So the meeting planner said to me, so-and-so needs to like rework her talk. Can you stall? And I'm like, why? Yes, I can. And not to say that I would wish those moments to happen, but those are the moments that get me hired and rehired because 
I saved her and I saved the day. And she said, I thank you so much because all I did in the very beginning of the, the conference, what I did was I said, Hey, you know, the, the conference was in Las Vegas. And I said, Hey, I'm Jeff. You know, I have my own show a couple doors down at the Paris. Uh, maybe we'll have some time to have some fun together, but right now we got a jam packed day. So we're going to get right into it. So I always say something like that, right? Maybe we'll have some time to have some fun. Okay. Nobody remembers later. It's like, Oh, you didn't, you know, I, I'm naturally kind of fun. So I can say that and get away with it. But then that tees me up that if I ever need to then fill time, I, it's a perfect segue. So all I did was I thanked the two of them for the chat. And I said, I said, Hey, you know, I mentioned that I have my own show a couple doors down and we've got a couple minutes here. Uh, so I thought, let's get some volunteers who wants to help me out. Right. They loved it. Okay. So the meeting planner afterwards said, thank you for saving the day. But then she said, can you do that tomorrow morning? Yes. Can you do that tomorrow after lunch? Can you do that? And I'm like, I didn't want to say I told you so because a lot of people will say like, no, oh, it's very serious business. Like, but when you have attendees sitting through talk after talk and breakout after breakout, they crave someone who's fun, who kind of pulls people up on stage. And obviously I'm always doing it with a corporate, you know, with a, with a corporate sense in mind. So yeah. I'm making jokes. If it's an insurance company, I'm making jokes when I'm juggling the knives. If it's, you know, I did one for Verizon and I juggled, you know, cell phones and I dropped one on purpose. And I was like, can you hear me now? And yeah. they're like, oh, like yeah. Yeah. he customized it like just for us. So yeah. I'm able to just kind of throw in a couple lines like that. So, you know, I know I went off here for a while, but I do really think it's important because there's a lot of MCs who don't have actual material if something goes wrong or if they need to fill some time. Yeah. And I have been, you know, there haven't been too many events where that's happened, but when that's happened, I'm, I know in my head, yeah. like, okay, that's why I'm being very well compensated because yeah. Yeah. that could have been a disaster. Yeah. And it's, a, I think it's a, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's an amazing investment and it's an, it's an assurance. It's like an insurance. It's an policy. insurance policy. Um, so You're we're going to wrap up right. here because we're, we're, we're right at our time, but I want to ask you two closing questions. Um, just really short, like, give me just one sentence. What is okay. the number one, it's going to be a hard question. What's the number one uh, reason to hire a virtual host or MC? Engagement. Okay. That was one word. That was awesome. That was great. And what is the biggest mistake you see people make in a virtual show? Pre-recording everything and doing a webinar. I always hear them say, Jeff, we want to do a really fun, unique, engaging, one-of-a-kind virtual event. So we're going to pre-record everything and do a webinar. And I'm always like, okay, that's not, that's not how I would do it. I'm happy to, to do that. And I have done that many times before. But if you want engagement, you want unique, you can't pre-record everything. Then it's just a video. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Great. Awesome. Well, Jeff, I just want to thank you so much for your time today. And we're going to follow up with everyone and send uh, the tips. We have a, a really great download of why it's optimal to use a host or MC for your virtual event. We've got tons and tons of great tips here from Jeff and several other professional uh, hosts and MCs that we work with. And Jeff, you are just a delight. We, every time we send you out, our clients are over the moon happy. And, you know, you're, you're just, you know, you're just a pleasure. You're a pleasure to work with for us. You're a pleasure to work with for our clients on site. You're amazing. And what you deliver is extraordinary. And we thank you. Well, thank you so much. Right back at you. I absolutely love, I love working with you guys. So. Let's keep it going for all these virtual events. All is it, right. Is it, do we have a reason? Katrina, do we have a reason to celebrate? Yes. Are we, are we celebrating? Yes, celebrate. We, yes. Yes. Hey. Oh, oh wait. I sh hold, hold on. Let me try that again. Can I try that again? I got, sure. I wasn't prepared. I wasn't prepared. Now I'm ready. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. I'm going to die. That's okay. Wow. I, I normally don't fire my own confetti. I normally don't fire my own confetti cannons. I leave it to the professionals, but I thought, uh, I thought we would end with a bang. That's very great. Awesome, Jeff. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you.